During the last 17 years, the U.S. Congress has authorized budgets totaling $58.5 billion for various NASA deep space exploration plans. By late summer of 2022, that total has likely exceeded $65 billion, most of which has been spent on developing a heavy lift rocket and deep space capsule that may carry humans into deep space. However, after all that tax money, NASA's deep space plans remain grounded. Fortunately, the coming together of America's space agency and its most audacious space company, SpaceX, saved NASA billions of dollars. And how did SpaceX do it? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Eight years ago, the business of space changed. In 2014, NASA tapped SpaceX and Boeing to build two new human-rated spacecraft the Crew Dragon and Starliner, respectively. Each company would first prove its ship capable of safe flight, then perform as many as six crewed missions to the ISS. Boeing hasn't yet been able to complete its test flights and hasn't even performed one crewed mission. But SpaceX, on the other hand, well, that contract has proved a resounding success. Musk's firm has delivered NASA a human-rated spacecraft in its hour of need, with Russia continuing to raise prices for rides into space nearly a decade after the space shuttle's retirement. So far, SpaceX has completed five crewed spaceflights for NASA, the 2020 Demo-2 mission that marked America's return to crewed spaceflight, followed by Crew-1 later that year, Crew-2 and 3 in 2021, and Crew-4, which blasted off on April 27th of this year. While Boeing is still grounded, NASA has asked SpaceX to help keep the ISS stuffed full of astronauts in the coming years. In fact, NASA announced in late February that it is modifying SpaceX's original 2014 commercial crew transportation capability contract and awarding the company three new crewed spaceflight contracts. Unsurprisingly and unoriginally, NASA will call these three additional flights Crew 7, Crew 8, and 9. To pay for them, NASA is adding $900 million to the $2.6 billion value of SpaceX's original CCT cap award, raising the value to $3.5 billion. That works out to roughly $300 million per mission and divided by four astronauts per flight, a per seat cost of $75 million. But is that expensive or is it cheap? Well, SpaceX's Crew Dragon flights offer cheaper ticket prices unmatched by any alternative. The last time NASA bought rocket tickets for its astronauts from Roscosmos in 2018, the Russian space agency charged $86 million per seat. It's hard to say how much Roscosmos would charge for those seats today, with present-day geopolitical difficulties making it difficult, but adjusted simply for inflation, $86 million in 2018 works out to be about $97 million per ticket in 2022 dollars. And this implies that in hiring SpaceX to carry its astronauts for only $75 million a pop, NASA is saving taxpayers about $22 million per ticket, or $88 million per flight. Similarly, SpaceX's per-ticket cost appears to offer significant savings relative to the price of flying astronauts on Boeing's Starliner. That's assuming, of course, Starliner is eventually certified safe to carry astronauts. According to a 2019 report by NASA's Office of Inspector General, Boeing flights were expected to cost around $90 million a ticket, which was already more than Roscosmos was charging. Adjusted for inflation, Boeing's price works out to be about $100 million per ticket in today's dollars, which is also more than the implied price of a Roscosmos ticket. So, compared to what Boeing will charge, SpaceX astronaut tickets represent taxpayer savings closer to $100 million per flight. I should point out that the savings are conservative. Using different data points, Spacenews.com calculates that the per seat ticket price offered by SpaceX is actually closer to $65 million than $75 million. By that metric, SpaceX's commercial crew flights represent savings of $128 million over Roscosmos and $140 million over Boeing. So, it's clear that NASA's 2014 decision to switch to hiring commercial aerospace contractors to ferry its astronauts to the ISS and back was the right one. It's saving taxpayers a lot of money. But that's not the only time SpaceX has helped NASA avoid wasting taxpayer money. 
They even saved at least over half a billion dollars, and perhaps more, thanks to just another contract with Elon Musk's SpaceX. Last July, the US Space Agency contracted the company's Falcon Heavy rocket to launch a space probe to one of Jupiter's moons, Europa, slated for 2024. The much-anticipated Europa Clipper mission will fly by and assess the evidence of water and extraterrestrial life on the astronomical body. The mission was driven through Congress thanks in large part to the support of one former representative, John Culberson, a Texas Republican who navigated it through the sea of veto points and competing priorities that often stands between scientific hopes and their realization. One way the mission avoided political pitfalls was a linkage with the Space Launch System Rocket, or SLS, a huge space vehicle designed to return humans to the moon and journey to Mars. The rocket had just one problem. It was hastily assembled from the remains of a cancelled NASA program, and there were no concrete plans for it. A decade ago, the folks behind each project joined forces to justify one another's work. Once built, SLS would be a rocket with nowhere to fly, David W. Brown writes in The Mission. His account of the project, Europa was a somewhere. To date, the delayed SLS has yet to fly. But besides that, the SLS became central to the Trump administration's Artemis program to return to the moon. NASA auditors have pointed out, in addition to the massive cost, that there would not be enough SLS rockets for both the moon and Europa missions. In 2019, NASA's Inspector General sounded out the possibilities and wasn't bullish on any of them, particularly on price even accounting for the fact that the SLS could get the probe to Jupiter faster, saving money spent on the program back home. The system would cost about $726 million. Two other rockets available for purchase, the United Launch Alliance's Delta IV and the Falcon Heavy, were forecast to cost $450 million each. The deal NASA eventually made with SpaceX for the Falcon Heavy, however, will cost just $178 million. The drop in cost is directly traceable to SpaceX's approach to designing reusable rockets and to the partnership NASA struck with Musk's space firm in its early days. Just think about it, in just two years, the price of launching a space probe fell by 75%. It's less than the cost of the rocket itself that launched the latest Mars rover last year. This will enable NASA to direct more resources to other science programs. According to Casey Dreyer, a space policy analyst at the Planetary Society, having that launch capability at that price point just saves so much, particularly for the science part of NASA that just does not have the mega budgets that human spaceflight does. To see other future missions by NASA able to leverage the lift capability of the heavy at that price point opens up a significant amount of space access. The Falcon Heavy, which didn't even exist when the Europa mission was being planned, has only flown three times, but it will launch at least five more times, including for a NASA mission to an asteroid called Psyche, before the Europa mission is expected to get underway in late 2024. Obviously, together, SpaceX and NASA have created great things. Like Kathy Luters, who manages the NASA program overseeing Crew Dragon said, this has been a great relationship for the both of us. Together, we have become stronger for this nation. And that's it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. As always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.